morning. Good morning. Welcome to Jackie United Methodist Church here in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Whether you are joining us as many of you are here in person or attending online as uh, tuning in, whether uh, you're doing it live or later on, uh, please know that whoever you are, whenever and wherever you are uh, joining us, you are welcome. As we gather separately and individually to worship, we are pleased that you have gathered with us as we come to raise our praise to the everlasting and all-loving God. May your heart be warmed by the presence of the Holy Spirit as we share love, God's love and kindness with one another. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, April 25th, 2021. Uh, participating in worship this morning are uh, Walter Gennese, who is our acolyte, Robin Gennese, who is recording and posting. Uh, Robin's name I've uh, got listed twice because she's also our special music this morning. And uh, Margie Gennese is our organist. I am Reverend Fred. I have the privilege of being pastor both here at the uh, Jagger First Church and also at East End uh, United Methodist Church. And again, welcome as we gathering to worship. Let us be in prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection of the life, raise us who trust in Him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where He reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I have something to share with you this morning because of uh, a gift to the East End Church. East End Church is able to make the announcement that any child or youth who is interested in going to summer camp, if you, oh, let me pick this up. I, I brought along at least uh, something a little more colorful than me along this morning. There's a prop here. But as long as you go to one of the camps in, uh, in our conference camping uh, brochure, that we will, East End Church will pay for your child to go. Anybody who uh, signs up for a mommy and me uh, camp, there's uh, at least one. Uh, it's a weekend camp that uh, uh, the church will also pay for mommy to go. And we want to make sure that any children, they don't have to be those who come to church. We certainly want to begin and make sure those who come to church uh, have the opportunity, but if you know anybody, uh, it may be uh, grandchildren or someone else, uh, please let us know. We'll make sure that you get a, a copy of the brochure so that you can find out what camps are available, uh, and where they're at. Also, form. Once that's filled out, if you want to stand to pay for it, you need to turn it in to us and I'll be your contact person uh, here for uh, Jagged First if you have anyone who would like to uh, go to camp. The, the early bird registration uh, has been moved. It's normally the 1st of May, which is this coming Saturday, to the 16th of May. Uh, there are reasons for that because of slow uh, process of getting the information out to vote. But I want to let you know that we won't be having uh, the camping program this year. Last year, unfortunately, they had to cancel all the camps. Now, I'll, just to put you at ease about, uh, or at least somewhat at ease about going or sending uh, your child, I, uh, Charlie Brenner is the, direct, the site director at about what was going on 
though we're having a campus program, they're not going to be able to accommodate quite as many campers this year. So uh, the sooner we get those ready spaces in, the, the more likely we'll be able to get uh, registered for the camp of your choice. Uh, they're also going to do things in pods. I, I remember when I uh, ran a week at camp, each of the uh, cabin groups or pairs of cabin groups their activities on a schedule, they would, uh, but they wouldn't all do it at the same time. While some were swimming, others were at crafts, and others were at games and uh, <coughs> or Bible study or something, and then, and then they would rotate uh, when they would do what. But in the evening, we'd all be together. Well, that that was the program, but that won't be happening this year. They'll be doing it in pods, uh, pairing up the, the cabins. In case anything would happen and, and would be any positive test, that it wouldn't have to shut down the entire camp. Uh, we hope we don't have to shut down any parts of it, but they're, they're doing, and there's more that they're doing, but I'm not going to give you all the details of that. But uh, they're, they're trying the best to, to both provide a, uh, a worthwhile camping experience and get uh, being uh, as safe as possible. This year. So again, anyone who would like to participate, uh, I'll see that you get a copy of the brochure and I'll be glad to uh, take your uh, registration form when you're ready. Also, uh, along the camping program, if there's adults who would like to go but they only want to go for a day, I've got an uh, opportunity for you. Well, I'll, I'll just put it that way. This coming Saturday and next Saturday, the 1st and the 8th of May, at Green Hills Camp, and if you're not familiar with Green Hills Camp, it's, uh, it's going to um, Alexandria and turning left and along the uh, Little Judy Avenue. We have a camp called Green Hills, and they have uh, spring work days, which is basically cleaning up after the winter, getting the campsite and things ready. I've done that, anything from helping <coughs> clean in the summer kitchen. The summer kitchen hasn't been used since uh, camp, well, probably camp uh, two years ago, because last year they didn't have camp, and uh, uh, get that cleaned up and ready for the kitchen staff, and also, uh, I've, I've got to spend uh, time in the pool. The, now, it doesn't sound that great. I mean, it sounds a lot better than it was. Yeah, I got time in an empty pool trying to help clean it out. Got pretty wet because we used water to do it, but the pool needs to be uh, cleaned pretty thoroughly before they can fill up the water. And weeding and other things, there's all kinds of uh, different projects and different things that people can help with. If you're interested, please uh, let me know, and uh, it would be great to be able to take a team to be either or both of the churches. And uh, as I said to uh, uh, one person before the service, uh, a team is people or more. So I, I'll do one and somebody else makes a team uh, uh, or more. That would be that would be wonderful. But just wanted to let you know. But particularly wanted to let you know about the opportunity uh, for summer camps.
Thank you, Rob. Our reading comes from Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, he will find will he find faith on the earth? It's been said that 90% of success is showing up. And there's a lot of truth to that. But I've also heard that if 90% of success is showing up, the other 10% is persistence. Now the title of my sermon this morning is called The Heavenly Phone Company. And now I'm not promoting the Heavenly Phone Company. In fact, I'm not to, but the Heavenly Phone Company. But the sermon is about the power of persistent prayer. Not wishful thinking. There's a difference between believing something or having faith in something and wishing for something. Wishful thinking is not the same thing. I'm not talking about uh, dreaming dreams and, and, and setting goals, but for instance, if you were in a dark room and you turn the light switch on. You would not even give a second thought about it other than you turning the switch on to get light. You have faith that the light will come on. But if you stand in the middle of the room and not approach the light switch to think, wish that the lights would come on, that's not really the same thing, is it? Uh, when thinking about this, for this morning, the, th the thought came to me, I wish I may, I wish I might, and I couldn't quite get the rest of it. But I knew that came from someplace, and I didn't want to just say, I wish I may, I wish I might. So talking to my wife, uh, we came up with what it was, and I finally knew where to look, and, and I Googled to get it, but the first, the first uh, uh, try was not quite it. It wasn't Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but it was Starlight, star bright. The first star I see tonight, I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I remember that. It's familiar. But if I'd have been on Jeopardy and I heard that, I'd say, oh, yeah, I know that. No, I don't know the whole thing. I wouldn't have been able to get the, uh, the answer right. But uh, uh, it's one thing to wish upon a star, but it's another thing to have faith in something, or to be persistent about it. For a few years, um, working with the Lions Club that I belong to, um, Stone Big Valley Lions, 
your ship has come in and you're still waiting for your ship to come in, you missed out on the opportunity. Looking for the reign of God to come when it's already in your midst, you're missing out. Prayer before anything else. Before being formulated in words. Before laying our needs in God's presence. Prayer is an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement in faith that the reign of God truly is already a part of our life. Prayer is the actualization of the power of the kingdom. Prayer is not so much a question of what I can get from God, but rather how much my life can be changed and how can I deal with life because I have faith to pray and to open my life the power of God's presence. The persistence of the widow who is vindicated by her persistence is striking. It changed her life and the lives of those around her, not the least of which was the unrighteous or unjust judge. We feel that we've tried and asked for so long for something that it is useless to continue. We feel that God is not listening to us, and even if God is, God is taking way too long to answer, or isn't answered in the way we want it to be answered. Too often, our prayer life 
is not linked to an active faith life. We pray, but we don't have the faith to actualize the reality for which we pray. Often we hear people comment on how lucky other people are. Everything goes their way. They seem to get what they want. Everything falls in place for them. I wish I was as lucky as you. In response, we could say, well, if you worked as hard as they do, you would be lucky too. No, it's not about luck. That's the crux of prayer. Living our faith with such an intensity that we would make our prayer bear fruit in our life. Sometimes we don't want to pray for your faithful prayer because it might bear, cause us to bear fruit in our own lives. And may God make the demand upon us upon who we are. Living our faith with such an intensity that we make our prayer bear fruit in our life. We make God's reign a reality for us. We open our lives to the power of God's kingdom, to the real power, the lasting power. The only unanswered prayers are those that are in ignored without doing anything about it. Prayers are not answered when we get what we want, but when we discover the power of faith to face every life situation and to see in it how God's reign is made known to us. Even sickness and death itself must be lived in that perspective. Is that not what Christ meant in his concluding comment in today's parable. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The power of prayer is related to the power of faith. The willingness to put your lives, put your life in God's hands. We are not placing a call to the heavenly phone company. When we place, put our prayers out there, we do so in a relationship with God. There's nobody taking a call to the handling for the big guy. It's not the heavenly phone company that we find through prayer. Rather, by placing our lives at the disposal of God's goodness and love. The meaning of prayer, even the most persistent prayer, must be lived in that context of faith. Otherwise, we risk, we run the risk of talking only to ourselves. As we go to the time of offering, and of course we're not passing the offering plate, and even if we did, we can't pass it to those of you who are uh, worshiping virtually with us. There are two ways that you can worship with your offering. And uh, for those that are here in person, we have an offering plate up front and an offering plate uh, just inside the doors that uh, you may place your offering in. If you didn't do it on your way in, so on your way out. Uh, that's one way to do it. For those who are worshiping virtually with us, you may do so by sending it uh, through the mail. Uh, for those uh, who are doing so,
Dagger Street United Methodist Church. Address is 1801 Pleasant Valley Boulevard. For those who may be watching from East End Church, it's 405 East Hudson uh, Avenue. Both of them are Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16602. If you are not part of either of these churches and not part of another church, uh, we welcome you to uh, participate in any way you feel led. If you're part of another church but are uh, joining us to, uh, for worship, we, uh, we welcome you as well as everyone else, but encourage you to support the work of your own church uh, in, in this time. And so, uh, as we prepare our gifts, hearts before the Lord. Let us be in prayer. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in this community. We ask this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was, that we might know life in all its fullness. Amen. things about persistent prayer uh, and doing some research and trying to add to what I had already planned for this morning. I came across this uh, prayer. It was printed online and it was under the uh, First Congregational Church of Ann Harbor, uh, Michigan. It had the prayer, I read the prayer and it called on it's saying everything I want to say this morning, but a whole lot better. And I thought, oh, I'd like to use this prayer, maybe adapt it a little bit uh, because of the pandemic and so forth. And so there was a, an email address, there was no name to it, but an email address to the church. So I sent the email to the church and saying, I found this prayer, give me the, the date that was on the prayer when years ago, and uh, what information I had in, in, in the site that I found it on, and a couple days later, I got an uh, email signed Darcy, and I looked at it, Darcy, who's Darcy, and then, oh, this is from Michigan, and I read it, and it said, uh, 
thing I, I think is um, a great prayer, well written, uh, well said, and if, if the sermon didn't touch it all, maybe the prayer was uh, say it better than what I'm trying to say. So let us be in prayer at this time. God, we pray as a community. Some of us do this daily, some weekly. Some wonder if you hear us at all, and yet we keep praying, we keep hoping. We name our concerns and our joys, and we say we lift them to you as if they are waiting towards heaven directly to your ears. Prayer is a strange thing. Even as we might not understand it all, we cannot explain how it works or when it works. We believe it does, in fact, work. It works because it keeps us in relationship with you, in an honest covenant in which you hear us and love us. Thank you for the opportunity to pray. Thank you for always listening. God, today we pray for perseverance. Today we pray for the courage to keep asking, keep trying, keep pushing. Today we pray that we are able to embody the doggedness of the widow that would not give up. When it seems like we are powerless, remind us we have a choice. When it seems we are invisible, remind us that we sometimes just see in a mirror dimly. When we wonder if it makes a difference, remind us that all change starts with the nuts. The world you love and the world that we are responsible to redeem. To move the scales of justice toward the least and the last will require perseverance on our part. Help us persevere, Lord, for we all carry burdens. Some here are grieving. Some are caring for aged parents. Some are raising young children and cannot seem to juggle it all. Some are worried about adult children that they can no longer raise or affect change for. Some are brand new parents, overwhelmed and sleep deprived. Others may be seeking purpose, community, or fulfillment. They are defining who they are and what they look like. Others may be broken by relationships or jobs or complicated family systems. We all carry these burdens, Lord, some too heavy to handle. Help us bear the weight. Help us to share the load. Remind us, O oh Lord, that we are not created to do created to be. Remind us of the water, our baptisms, where we were claimed and loved because of who you were, who we were to you, and who you created us to be. Hear us now. Hear our prayers of joys and our whippers of pain. Sustain us in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we uh, uh, depart this morning. Uh, this will be the last time I make this particular announcement while I'll be obedient to the emails for those of you who get it. But uh, uh, I've been promoting Celebrate Gratitude in celebration of Easter, the season of Easter, as well as reopening for in-person worship. And uh, by providing for things that are a very short supply at the uh, Altoona Mission Central Hub. And uh, those items are band-aids, two-gallon Ziploc bags, nail clippers or nail files, hand towels, sleepers, receiving and receiving blankets. If uh, you bring any of those in, I'll see that they get to the hub. I delivered uh, about 40 items between the two churches this past week. I'll be glad to make the trip as many times as I need to, as long as things come in for that. Uh, but uh, I, I said I'd promote it during the month of April, and this being the last Sunday of April, that's my last announcement on that. If you would like your joy or concern included in worship, for those of you who are uh, worshiping virtually, and even for those who are not, if you send it to me by Saturday uh, morning uh, by text or email, I'll have it if you're in person.
person and give it to, hand it to me in writing because my memory is, it's not because I'm getting old. They say memory is the first thing that goes, but my memory will never go on me because I don't have a very good one to begin with. But uh, from the time I, you tell me in the back of the sanctuary, by the time I walk up front, I forget sometimes who told me, let alone what you told me. So um, uh, I, I need that in writing to, to make sure we share that, but I'd be glad to share that uh, on, on uh, the, the time of choice and concern for the week. Uh, in addition to the uh, pastoral prayer that was written by Reverend Darcy Crane, the offertory prayer came from faithandworship.com. The mission for the month, the monthly mission uh, for May will be Wounded Warriors, and uh, we'll be uh, getting more information on, out on that. I did mention earlier the spring work days, May 1st and May 8th. May 1st is coming up this Saturday. Anyone who would like to take part, you let me know and I'll give you the uh, information you need to, to take part. And if somebody needs a ride, I'll be glad to, to share a ride as well. For my reflection this morning, I was uh, thinking about what, what might I do Concentrated on the sermon this week and, and, and reflection, of course, and so I thought it was pretty well. But last evening, as I was putting get things together for the service, I usually do that Saturday if I don't have it already done. Do it Saturday morning or finish it up Saturday morning. Uh, but yesterday, uh, I took part in a, a virtual worship service for uh, the Lions uh, State Convention, and that was recorded yesterday. So. I put all that off to last evening, and I was doing that, and I'm thinking, the sermon's almost done, and I'll take it home and finish it up, as I did. And, uh, but I, I don't have my opening sentence. I always try to have something to be able to open with, and uh, I need to write a reflection then after I get the sermon done. And I looked up at the wall. This is in East, uh, East End Church. And there was a poster that said, Prayer push. I don't know if you've ever heard the term prayer push before. I never heard it quite like that before. I saw that poster when I first moved here, but I hadn't given it a thought all week, even though I passed it a number of times. But as I was at the table, sort of thing, making sure I had everything together um, before putting them in the folder. Uh, and, oh, prayer push. I thought, ah, that might be a, 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 a way to start the sermon. And that was what I was going to do until, oh, the notes that I had taken when I decided to, that I had written down, when I was thinking about uh, back in March what I was going to preach on in April, oh, 90% of success is showing up with 10% of persistence. Uh, that, that makes a better start. And this, I'll say for the uh, reflection. Prayer push, push, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Simple as that. That's as persistent as much as anything that I've said this morning. Pray until something happens. And now, as we close this morning, go as forgiving and holy people to do the will of the one who loves us unconditionally. May God's peace and joy be yours in all that you